Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. We're gonna continue to follow the Women's World Championship match. Second game today after a solid, let's call it solid, solid draw in the first game. In today's second round, the challenger and highest rated women player in the world, not counting the inactive Judith Polgar, Ho Yi Fan, had the white pieces against the world champion Maria Musichuk. Maria won the title in the knockout tournament in 2015 in which Hu Yifan didn't participate. Hu Yifan, of course, eager to reclaim it. Let's see what she did with white. She opened with 1e4, as she tends to. No surprises from Muzichuk either. Just as her opponent in the first round, she sticks with the most solid move, 1e5. She does have the Sicilian in her repertoire as well, but she employs e5 frequently as well. Knight f3, knight c6. Hu Yifan goes for the Ruy Lopez, bishop b5. Decides not to copy her opponent anymore, who played the Italian game in the first round. So bishop b5, the main line. And Maria Musichuk sticks to her guns, has not called, caught any Berlinitis, but instead opts for what we call the open Spanish, a line she has played before. a6, bishop a4, knight f6, short castles. And here the move knight takes e4 characterizes the open Spanish opposed to the move I prefer, bishop e7, which I guess you could call the close Spanish. So knight takes e4, grabs that pawn. The idea is not to hold it, to hold on to it, but to change the structure a little bit. The best white move, as is well known, is the move d4. And neither here nor on the next move should black be very tempted to take on d4. It always leads to trouble, in this case, after rook to e1. Therefore, they play b5, kicking this bishop away, bishop to b3, and here the move d5, is the theoretical main move. E takes d4, once again no good, rook e1, d5, and the easiest way to punish it is knight to c3, with the point being that after d takes c3, bishop takes d5, it takes a lot of knights. Therefore black goes d5, returning the pawn and trying to close this diagonal for the bishop, and after d takes e, bishop to e6, we have the starting position of the modern day open Spanish, White faces a wide choice here. The main move has always been knight bd2, but after knight bd2, black has been doing very well very well recently in the line knight c5, c3, bishop to e7, where white is struggling to get anywhere. So not a big surprise that Hu Yifan deviates, plays bishop to e3 instead. This doesn't change the nature of the position. The white pawn on e5 can either be an asset if it ever gets supported by the f pawn, for example, or it can be a weakness if it gets rounded up or if it stands in the way and black manages to mobilize his pawn majority. For black, she wants to finish her development, go bishop e7, short castles, clarify the situation of this knight, either to put it to c5 or to exchange it, as we see in the game, and then solve the problem of this slightly clumsy knight on c6, which is standing in the way, it's blocking the d pawn. Some lines this knight will want to go to e6, and some lines it will want to go a5, to a5 and then to c4. Of course, all of this is still mainline theory, and the players are following such for quite a bit. Bishop e7, c3, short castles, knight bd2, all very natural moves. Queen to d7, connecting the rooks, and bishop to c2. Still well known, bishop c2, logical move, challenging this knight, and deciding this bishop didn't have all that much work on this diagonal since d5 was well defended. Musichuk takes on d2, this is also the main line, they used to play a bit of f5 here in the old days, but I've never liked this after ef6, knight f6, the black king feels a little weakened and I believe white has decent chances to gain a bit of an advantage here. Therefore, black takes on d2, queen takes d2 is obvious, and the move bishop g4 Still following mainline theory, rook a d8 is a move that is sometimes played here as well to stay more flexible and in some, in some cases prefer prepare bishop f5 exchanging this bishop. But bishop g4 is very natural, immediately putting pressure, threatening bishop takes f3, followed by knight takes e5, so white has to react. And this is the point where the first small surprise of the game comes. The main line here is the move queen to d3, clever little move threatening checkmate on h7. The point is after the force g6 that now white goes bishop h6 and thereby with tempo protects the knight on f3 and more importantly the pawn structure from being spoiled. Still white hasn't really achieved anything in practice in this line after let's say rook fe8, rook fe1 to keep an eye on this. 
Now black exchanges bishops with bishop f5, queen d2, takes, queen takes c2. And now she can solve her last problem with knight to d8, putting this knight on the very good e6 square, freeing the way for the c pawn to go to c6 or c5. In my opinion, white doesn't have the slightest trace of an advantage here. Therefore, who you found deviates, plays the move bishop to f4, which is a much riskier strategic concept. She doesn't mind getting double pawns on the f-file and hopes that these double pawns combined with the two bishops will be an asset, an asset rather than a liability because they can be pushed up the board with f4 and f5 later on. Leads to very double edge play. For now, Mosichuk accepts the invitation, goes bishop takes f3, g takes f3, and once again the question is how to arrange the black forces. I'd be tempted to play knight to d8 here, just opting to e6 asap after something like bishop to g3, knight to e6, f4. In general, in this structure, it's very important for black not to allow white to go f4, f5. So you would have to go f5 here yourself. And now if white did nothing, black would reach a dream scenario where this knight blockades the past e-pawn and both white bishops are severely restricted. Therefore, in such a position, white would have to go e takes f6. I guess this or some, something along these lines is what Musichuk dislikes. I'm not disliked. I'm not sure how bad it is after bishop f6. My best guess is the position is roughly equal. <laughs> Instead, she played the move rook a d8, reinforcing the d5 pawn, but also blocking this square for future knight maneuvers. We well, find goes rook fd1. Not an obvious choice. You could leave this rook on the king side as well. But she wants to keep an eye on d5 and may prepare for a potential d5 to d4. Queen e6 is a logical move, anticipating bishop b3 attacking this pawn and also attacking the white weakness or the white pawn. It's not clear if it's a weakness on e5 immediately. It has to be defended, therefore white plays queen to e3. And once again black has to sort of decide how she plans to proceed. And here I'm not a big fan of Musichuk's next move. She plays rook d7. Doesn't spoil the game or anything, but it feels a little slow. There's no longer a big need to vacate the square for the knight since e6 is occupied anyway. Also doesn't look like rook fd8 is going to be necessary to maintain that pawn. Therefore, I think it should have been a higher priority to solve the problem of this knight. Knight a5 comes to mind, threatening knight c4. Should white go b3, then black can mobilize by playing c5 with a nice pawn formation and I believe a perfectly fine position. This knight can return to c6. So knight a5 strikes me as a good move. Why are some other options here? But nothing that seems all that scary. Rook d7 loses a bit of a tempo as mentioned. Now you find continues with a plan to go bishop to g3, preparing f4, f5. Musichuk anticipates that, plays g6 to stop f5 and also to block this bishop's diagonal. But now who you find, I believe cleverly, switches sides and goes a4, pointing out another small flaw with the black position. Black is not well prepared for an opening of the a file, and that's what white is trying to get. I was surprised that Musichuk allowed this. I thought she would try to keep the position closed with the move b5, b4 here. What she probably disliked is that white can go a5, fixing the weakness on a6. And I do think that white is a little better here. Can play both on the queen side and sometimes queen d3 to target this. Sometimes bishop to a4 doing things on this diagonal or on the king side with f4 threatening f5. So it's not all that pleasant due to rook d7 but still I think this was the lesser evil here. Something like rook fd8 and black still has a pretty compact position. Another option was a move knight to a5 but that seems to run into some trouble after a takes b. Knight c4, queen e2, a takes b and b3 and this pawn becomes a problem. Therefore, Musichuk chooses a third move, probably didn't like either of these options. She plays the move knight to d8 now, but it feels like if you want to go knight d8, you didn't have to spend time on rook d8 and rook d7 and g6. So it looks slightly dangerous. Still, nothing too bad has happened. Who you found continues with a takes b, of course, opening the a file for her rook, a takes b, and now proceeds with plan B, playing on the king side, f4, threatening f5. And this is a threat immediately. If black plays a careless move, let's say c5, 
and f5 is a big big problem. She takes f and queen f3 or queen f4, winning the pawn back with an overwhelming position. Black is not quite in time here. Therefore, after f4, black has to react. In general, in this structure, you almost always have to react to f4 by playing either f5 or f6. f6 is the move played in the game. I'd slightly have preferred f5, but it doesn't make a real difference because in the game e takes f6 was played anyway. I just feel like after f6, why did some other options? Rook a8 might be a move, who knows. Still, e takes f6 is very logical, keeping the position open for the two bishops. And black, surprisingly, doesn't really have a choice. She has to go queen takes f6. One cute little trick is queen takes e3, f takes e3, bishop takes f6. Doesn't look too terrible. Black were to get in c6, but no such time because there is the trick rook takes d5, rook takes d5, bishop b3, and the pin is gonna cost the rook and leave white with a healthy extra pawn when the smoke clears. So you can't do that. Hmm. Similarly, bishop takes f6 was not very good because white keeps opening the position with queen takes e6 and f5, and these two bishops are having a field day with the black camp and the weaknesses in there. Therefore, queen takes f6 was forced to keep things under control, and Hu Yifan plays a move which I quite enjoy. The computer disagrees with me, but I thought it was a classy little maneuver. She played queen to e2. Computer wants to play more directly with f5, g takes f, bishop e5, queen somewhere, king to h1, try to give mate here with rook g1, but it's not so easy to sacrifice a pawn in this situation after bishop f6, black defense for now, so not surprised that didn't happen. And as mentioned, I quite like the move queen to e2, attacking this pawn, but that's not the real target, the point is after c6, which was played, now the queen transfers to a much better location, prime real estate on g4 targeting the rook on d7 and also preparing the breakthrough f4, f5. This rook has to move, knight e6 just didn't work because of f5 or rook to e1 with too many problems, therefore the rook had to go away, rook b7, and Hu Yifan wastes no time, goes f5 now that the queen is on g4, exploiting the spin. Things are looking bad for black, but here Musichuk does not collapse but finds the only and best defensive move the move bishop to d6. The idea is to open the seventh rank for the rook and also to remind white that she has some weaknesses as well, specifically the pawn on f2, for example, after f takes g6, bishop takes g3, you would have to recapture with the queen in order not to allow the black queen to enter f2, and after queen takes g3, h takes g6, black is doing quite all right. You can't take on g6 anytime soon because of rook to g7. Therefore, Hu Yifan plays a more cunning move, the move rook to a6, introducing a bit of a pin along the 6th rank, and also introducing an idea we're gonna see in the game. Sometimes rook takes d5 as a threat now. Musichuk plays the best move, rook to g7, defending against f takes g6, which happened anyway. And now, it was Black's time to play very precisely to stay in the game. H takes g6 looks obvious, but that runs into a nice little shot, which I mentioned already. But here it's particularly strong. Rook takes d5. If c takes d5, just rook takes d6, queen to e7, and even though Black is an exchange up, it doesn't matter. What matters here are the three isolated Black pawns, the weak king, and the powerful two bishops. And after even rook takes g6, the game, I believe, would have concluded quickly. These bishops are just too strong and black can't survive this. Therefore, maybe Musichuk realized this rook takes d5, or maybe she had missed it from far away, I'm not sure. And panicked here, played bishop to c5, but that just doesn't work. The last chance was bishop takes g3. As we've seen earlier, queen takes g3. And now, not h takes g6, which looks obvious because of, once again, rook takes d5, exploiting this pin. Now the, a second time, but instead the quiet but very strong move, queen to e7, stepping out of the sixth rank, making use of the fact that gh7 is not a threat because all of a sudden white loses the queen. 
And therefore after queen e7 and turning h3 6 the battle continues. White might be a little better after something like king to f1 in order to play rook e1, but we still have very much a fight on our hands. Instead bishop c5 as mentioned was a move played in the game, attacking the f2 pawn, but it just doesn't work and Hu Yifan reacts very well with a quiet but very powerful move, the move king to g2. Just stopping bishop takes f2 with check and if it were to follow now after bishop f2, white just goes rook to f1 and wins a piece and there with the game. So after king g2, it's desperate times, h takes g6 was played, gotta get rid of this pawn one day before it ends up being on h7, but h takes g6 allows a theme we should be very familiar with by now. The move rook takes d5 once again, this rook on a6 has a say. Now yeah, things are very grim, c takes d5, rook takes f6, just loses, let's say rook takes f6. Many options, the most powerful maybe queen g5 and the black position is not coordinated enough to put up any resistance here. So yeah, not much to do. Musichuk played the move that maybe she had banked her hopes on, bishop takes f2, based on the point that rook f1 is no longer possible picking up that piece. But Hu Yifan shows her class in this game really, she of course had anticipated this bishop takes f2 and had seen the refutation, the move bishop to b3. There's alternatives, it's not the only winning move, but it is very quiet and very powerful, similar to king g2, just introducing threats along this diagonal. Any rook move is a threat now, and an added problem for black is that she can't get out of this diagonal easily because king h7 allows queen h3 check, and the king has to go back to his own funeral on that a2 g8 diagonal. So not much to do, Musichuk tried knight e6, of course trying to block this diagonal differently, but knight e6 now allows white to finish the game without fireworks, just rook to d6, attacking this knight three times, it's only defended once, therefore it can't be kept alive, and the problem is that after bishop takes g3 or bishop c5 is played in the game, White should not allow mate in one with queen f1. Let's say rook e6 would be a serious mistake after queen f1 checkmate, but instead can just simplify to an endgame piece up with queen takes e6. And that is what the world, oh, I almost said the world champion, what the world number one, Hu Yifan, did. And therefore the world champion Maria Musichuk had to resign here, loses the second game of the match and is now behind one and a half half which of course is bad news. The favorite, the 100 points high rated Hu Yifan takes the lead in the match. And we'll see if Musichuk can make a comeback maybe in her next white game. But this game, yeah, wasn't really won in the opening. It was won, I believe, yeah, by better calculation, or maybe better feel for the position by Hu Yifan. Starting outside of the opening where I believe Musichuk made some small inaccuracies, maybe rook a d8 and then in particular rook d7 and g6. I didn't like all that much and Hu Yifan exploited it with very powerful play. My favorite move of the game, the little move queen to e2, followed by queen to g4, improving the position and developing a serious initiative. So Hu Yifan in the lead, one and a half half. The match is based on 10 games. So there is still a lot of chess to play. Thank you guys for watching. I'll keep you posted. See you next time. Bye bye.